overall evolution, that rain-cooled air that I've talked about has gotten in front of the tornado, and the tornado is resisting moving into that because that air is heavier and denser, and the tornado is making a turn. Um, part of the, the, the things that Dr. Fujita and I studied in the super outbreak back in 1974 was exactly this, how tornadoes would make turns in uh, part of their life cycle, and we hypothesized at that point that it was in relation to rain-cooled air that was pushing it. In this case, it seems to be pushing it back a little bit to the south and west. Uh, and so this tornado may... Now, oh. Dr. Forbes, you can now, down toward the bottom of the, down toward the ground now, Dr. Forbes, you can now start to see, it's hard to tell if there's any debris within that or not, but you can now get a really good visual, the funnel and the ground, although it turns, looks to me like it's getting very skinny and maybe more of a rope-like shape right toward the ground here, but you can definitely see the interaction with the funnel itself and the ground. Yeah, it's definitely gotten uh, uh, very much rope-shaped and uh, there's, there's no doubt that there is uh, potentially d damaging to destructive winds at the ground, and we're just hoping that there's nothing in its path to, uh, to destroy. It certainly, even at this stage, even as it ropes out like this, can be a dangerous tornado. It's certainly wider aloft than it is at the ground, but very interesting. We've watched the whole evolution, Mike, from a funnel car oh. to a narrow tornado to a wedge tornado. Look at D that. You can see almost... Dr. Forbes, you can look right inside the tornado. That is unbelievable. Look at that. You can look right into the top of it. That is awesome, Mike. And you can see there the counterclockwise rotation. It has little rings. It's like smoke rings that are rising in the tornado itself. Uh, with that outer ring structure and then the it almost looks dr. Forbes like an outer funnel and an inner funnel What exactly is going on here? That is beautiful. Yeah, the the lowest pressure is right at the center That's where we're seeing that uh, funnel then we're seeing little rings of debris out near the edge where the the updraft uh, is still the strongest and uh, We're getting almost like a, a double structure that we sometimes see in water spots And, and this is kind of roping out as a, as a almost a water spot appearance at this point uh, the water spots do that as, as rain pushes them a little bit off the uh, vertical, makes them tilt, as you've been pointing out. But definitely, look at the rotation there, counterclockwise rotation in the sky re revolving about this tornado. Dr. Forbes, I look at the top of the tornado here. I see horizontal spin, okay? So we're looking, you know, spin that's parallel to the ground, but then I see also spin that is more like a corkscrew that's vertical as well. So we've got multiple spins in multiple directions here. This is really amazing to have this kind of vantage point this close. Yeah, it has, of course. Part of the reason for that corkscrew is that the tornado, as you say, the upper portion is leaning so far forward toward you that uh, from your perspective, it seems like there's some up and down motion uh, within that. It, it's all sort of rotating, revolving right about the tornado, but it's almost gotten itself a horizontal because the funnel itself now is being here. It's almost horizontal in this area. Here it's still vertical. Here it's almost turned horizontal. So it's, it's spinning almost up and down at this point. It's, it's amazing. This is, again, live tornado that you're viewing here in Goshen County, Wyoming. Vortex 2 has been deployed on this storm for about 45 minutes now, sampling the data with this. We also have a tornado warning for Laramie County. It looks like the funnel itself likely to go east of the city of Cheyenne itself. But tornado warnings for Goshen County and for Laramie County. Obviously, we've got the visual on the tornado right now. We've been watching this evolve from a wedge-shaped structure to more of a rope-like structure as it goes more horizontal and tilts. When this initially formed, this is a large, almost perfectly vertical, wedge-shaped tornado. Multiple funnels began to drop, and then came the large wedge tornado. But now you can see we've got more of a rope-like structure. Dr. Forrest has been analyzing this, and you can still still see down toward the ground, we've still got the interaction with the ground, so we've still got a funnel on the ground, although I'm suspecting, suspecting at some point here that is going to lift, Dr. Forbes. It looks like it's significantly weaker than it once was. It, it is indeed much weaker, Mike, but I, I do believe you there, just as we panned uh, in, that I saw, saw a little bit of a dust cloud still at the ground there, so this is still capable of damage. It's also, as we've been talking about, uh, still uh, I think there's still a little bit of dust being kicked up by this at the ground, so it's not done having winds at the surface. And off to the right and a little bit closer to you, uh, there could be a new tornado that would develop. Absolutely amazing. And now it's kinking. Uh, and basically, there it goes, Dr. Forbes. It looks like it has completely dissipated. Wow, that was truly amazing. You've just witnessed the complete evolution 
and dissipation of a tornado. And now it looks like the center of the thunderstorm that created uh, that tornado is now about to pass directly over top of us. A vortex to Dr. F Actually, hold on a second. It looks like I'm wondering now if we've got something still trying to hold on here, Dr. Forbes. Richard, can you see? It looks like a little dust cloud here. Dr. Forbes, because yeah. this looks far removed, though, Dr. Forbes, from what we were watching earlier, though, but it still looks like it potentially could have a little bit of a dust cloud here at the surface. There's something there. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the original, the remnants of the original, or if, if we have a little gust NATO, a little low level whirlwind that's uh, on the gust front of the storm under the flanking line. Uh, but you're right, there's certainly something there. Okay, now Dr. Forbes, uh, where the top of the tornado once was is directly in front of us right now. I can obviously see a lot of spin still to remain in this tornado. And you were saying if we get another one, it could be directly in this spot that's following us right now. Actually, you know what? I think we gotta go. I think we gotta go. I think this might be coming toward us and lowering. I think this might be a little bit too dangerous for it to be here. Let's everybody go. Let's everybody get in our cars. Let's go south. Uh, Dr. Forbes, when we look at this, actually, yeah, that's gonna be big. We gotta go. We got to go. That's coming right for us, Dr. Forbes. Yeah, Mike, uh, stay safe. Uh, typi typically, uh, Mike, as the uh, one tornado dissipates, the next one will form uh, typically about four or five miles off to the east. And so that would definitely put you in a place where it's a good time for you to be moving. Okay, Dr. Forbes, when I, when I look at this some more, I mean, it's very, very close to us. I don't see a funnel that has formed just yet, but I feel like we're a little bit too close for safety here. As far as where we would be concerned for winds or potential debris, I mean, obviously that's going to be right into the funnel. If we were to be close to hail, is that going to be on the north side of this storm? Because right now I don't see any precipitation or hail at all. It's, it's going to be farther north. It's, that's exactly right, Mike. It's amazing. When we began this uh, uh, series here, there was a tremendous amount of heavy rain and hail falling right behind uh, the tornado. That has all disappeared. Uh, and so now if you just take a jog to your south, uh, the uh, looks as if you can get out of that. Uh, to heading north, on the other hand, uh, I anticipate that there's still uh, quite a body. There it is. You see over to the north, there's still quite a body of rain and, uh, and hail in there with this storm. Okay, Dr. Forbes, I think what we're going to do here for all the crew safety is we're going to hop into cars here real quick. We can still keep our cameras live. I can still talk to you, but for everyone's safety, everyone's in their cars. I think we're going to hop in right now and try to head farther south here. I'm going to shut the door here for Richard as he hops in the car here, and then we're going to head farther southbound. Uh, we're very close to what, uh, what is the, was the leading edge of the storm now as it pushes more east-southeast. Can you give us an estimation on the forward speed of the tornado, uh, at least this part of the storm? It's not a tornado anymore. Yeah, probably 25, maybe this particular portion of the storm may be just a tad faster because you're uh, getting close to where the gust front uh, just south of the tornado is pushing forward. So perhaps 30, 35 miles per hour or off toward the east. And as Mike has been pointing out, tornado warning for Goshen and Laramie counties in southeast Wyoming. Uh, Dr. Forbes, when I, when I look at what Vortex 2 is able to accomplish with something like this complete tornado genesis, how advantageous is the data that they are going to get to that they're trying to do and the ultimate outcome, which may be um, figuring out which storms produce tornadoes and which ones don't? Well, this one, this is going to be a, a spectacularly valuable data set for the Vortex 2 project. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about how impressed I was that a big wedge tornado could form like that with the rain curtain and hail curtain right behind the wall cloud. Uh, that, that made it a high precipitation supercell. Those are supposed to have less chance of producing a tornado than ones where the rain had been mostly staying off to the north. Uh, and so that, that would be a classic supercell. So, this one, the, the stick net measurements of temperature, uh, any weather balloons that they send up into this will be able to get temperature measurements and, and be able to, to understand uh, how this could happen. And of course, the Doppler the, and the multiple Doppler velocity measurements that are obtained out of this uh, will uh, have be able to document the entire tornado evolution, the entire evolution from non-tornado to, to tornado and not to dissipation. A spectacular data set. You could, as long as uh, everything is working the way it's designed, uh, you could not have asked for a better uh, data set than this case, as far as I can tell from, from what you've been showing us.